This is Code.org. Let's see what we're doing. A DJ stores a playlist they use at various events in a 2D array. Oh, and this is our 2D array. It's 2Ds because, well, it's two-dimensional. We have three rows here. This is the start and the end of our 2D array. It's all contained within these curly brackets. Okay, so write a method find duplicates by implementing the algorithm you developed in your find duplicates activity guide. You likely have a paper copy of this. Uh, let me duplicate or not, but it's digitally linked there as well. All right, so we need to identify and we're going to get used to this approach to developing an algorithm, right? We need to identify the process information what information is needed in the next loop cycle we need to transverse or go through the array we should be performing test one and it's really good for this to become second nature so let's go back to the actual activity here and what do we want to do we need to identify the process identify the information that needs to be used in the next iteration okay so what do we need if we are looking for duplicates, we need to go through each item in a row. So first thing we're going to need are rows. So that's a for loop for int. And I'm just going to keep it simple, calling it row is equal to zero. Row is going to be less than, well, the entire length of our array. It looks like what, oh, interesting. Implement your algorithm to check if the current row, oh, so we're only going to need one row. Well, that's great. So instead, this is going to be a uh, column. We could do a column. We could call it an index because uh, we're just going through a row, but I'll call these call. So call is equal to zero. Call is going to be less than current row dot length. Now I'm not doing zero because the current row, right, is only one row. It's not a 2D array like this when we get the length of a row of an array. And then what do we want to do? I want to go up by one each time to navigate my way through. All right, this is all looking good. Now, what do I want to do each time? I'm looking for a duplicate. So we want to think about how that can be accomplished, right? We want to start by printing out, as is suggested in our activity guide, print out the loop variable. All right, so let's just start with that. This is going to help us determine what will actually be needed. So I'm just going to use a, oops, System.out.println. And then I'm going to just do, let's see, we got current row and then call. So I'm just going to print the value that I currently have access to. It's a great way to debug. Return false. I'm fine with that for now. Now I got to make sure this gets called. Uh, event has duplicates. Is that going to run this? It is not. So, it, but this is public too, guys. So I'm going to call it directly. Find duplicates current row. So this is just for testing. I'm definitely going to need to delete this after the fact, but just for testing my play list dot find duplicates. And then I need to pass it a row. So I'm just going to do event playlist and I'll just pass it the first row. Now let's see what errors I have. Okay, now loops get complicated rather quickly, so it's an excellent idea to follow along with this. All right, so I've printed out the variable. Outside of the loop, print out the length of the list. Will there be off by one error? Okay, so if we are looking for duplicates, something we want to keep in mind is I can't just print out a list and assume I'm going to find the duplicates. I am only looking at one item each time right? So I need to be looking at the next item as well. If I only have one loop, it's going to be impossible to compare the current column with all of the other data in the list. In order to do that, I need, well, a second loop. So for int, and since I already have column, I'm going to say uh, compare, maybe I could do next call and set that equal to the current column. However, and this is a great hint right now, outside of the loop, will there be an off by one? We don't, we need the current column, but we need to be adding one to this. The reason for that is, 
is we're looking for a duplicate. If all we do is look at the current column and say, hey, does the current column equal the next column when the next column is equal to the current column index, that's a problem. We got to add one to make sure we're looking in, at the row ahead. Now we need our next call to be less than the current row dot length. I have an issue and I'll show you in a sec actually. And then next call plus plus and boom. Now here's our inner array. So let me go ahead and do, I'm going to control X. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to put one here, but I'm also going to put it here. And I'm going to say, just printing it out, keep in mind, uh, call. So this is the column. Okay. This is the outer loop. And then this will be next call. What I currently have saved in next call or stored. All right. Let's see if this runs. Perfect. Now let's look at what's happening. So our column is wake up, which makes sense. It's the first song. Our next column is high power. Perfect. And then once it's at high power, it loops through and says bloop back to the top and it goes up by one. It then hits what's after high power. I can't feel my face. Then it should go to wake up. Yep. Then it should go to cheap thrills. Yep. Once it's gone through this entire row, it should then hit the bottom of our loop. It is done, goes back to the top. Column is now equal to the length of, uh, when we add one to next column, it will no longer be less than the length of the row. We then drop out of this loop, hit the bottom and go up by one row. So that's perfect. Now we should have higher power, second item on the list. And then we compare that to can't feel my face. And then we compare it to wake up and cheap thrills, which is why next column is those. Then it's can't feel my face. We compare it to wake up and cheap thrills. Then wake me up and we compare that to cheap thrills. And then cheap thrills. This is a problem, guys. Look what we just did. We compared it to cheap thrills because they're both at the end. So what we need to make sure, since we're always going to be one step ahead with our inner loop, we want to make sure that our outer loop is minus one. So it's less than the length of the current row minus one is what that would need to be. Okay. Now, instead of just printing it, I actually might leave printing it for testing purposes, but I'll also have maybe something like, uh, boolean found dupe is going to be equal to false. And then inside of here, I'll say, if current row call equals, and actually I'm thinking more of JavaScript. Think about string equality, guys. We really, to make sure we're comparing strings correctly, want to do equal here. So equal, and we want to know if it's equal to uh, current row next call. And yes. So if current row call is equal to the current row next call string, then what do we want to do? I want found dupe to be equal to true. And I want to, at the end of all this, return found dupe. Let me confirm that this is successfully running. Oh, no, it's not. Just, oh, equals. That looks better. Awesome. And now it's going to return that. Okay. That's looking good. And notice we only have treat thrills once. Let me go ahead and get rid of my council logs or my, uh, system prints. Oops. Goodbye. Goodbye. Kill you off. So long. And another way to do this, just to point out, if you want to be fancy, you could even just instead of set a, instead of set a variable equal to true, you could return it directly here, return true. And then if it reaches down here, return false and get rid of that. I like how I have it, but that would be uh, technically a more efficient way to approach this. Okay. So write the method event has dupes by implementing the algorithm you developed and finding duplicates. All right. So again, we're referencing this and I want to do a similar approach. So event has duplicates. It put your algorithm to check if any rows contain duplicate values. 
Interesting. So I want to code this all out. Now, what are we doing? Well, now we need to go through each row and compare it with a value from every other row. Yikes. So this is going to be complex. To do this, I need to navigate. I need to check all three rows if there's a duplicate in any of those three rows. So I'm going to need three loops. And that's what I'm starting to hammer out. Now, if we get smart, which we're gonna, we won't actually need to write out all three loops, but I wanna show you what I mean to start. And now I wanna make this less than my entire 2D array, which is event playlists dot length and row plus plus. Okay. So now that's my row that I am currently on. And now for this row, I need to go through every value and compare it to every other value. Look, what does this do? This whole mammoth thing goes through every value, every column in a row, compares it to every other value, and returns true. So I could take this and slap it here. Now I loop through each row individually, loop through the contents of the row, and compare the contents to one another. Now, I want to point out also with this approach, guys, you never have to go backwards because you're comparing it forward as you move. Therefore, looking backwards each time would not be necessary. All right. That being said, I don't need to copy and paste this, though. If you're copying and pasting code, there's probably a better way. And there definitely is. Let's just call the method find duplicates rather than having those two loops also here i can just say five duplicates and then what do i need to pass it well i need to pass it a row well i have my, my event playlists and then what row the current row that i'm on for the event playlists right then what happens bloop it goes up here and it runs using whatever row of event playlist i'm on grabs the first column, loops through it, looks for duplicates, and returns true if there is any. Implement your algorithm to check if any row contains duplicate values. Okay, well then, let's go ahead and do if, and this time I'll show you a direct return, right? So notice up here I used a variable to do this. It's actually cleaner and more efficient, so I want to demonstrate it. If row has duplicates, bloomp, I'm going to return true. There's no reason to keep looping if we find a duplicate. Once I find one, I'm done. Done, set, over. There's a duplicate. Otherwise, I will return false. And like I was saying, you could actually do that up here too. It is considered more efficient. So there's no reason to keep looping. Once I find a duplicate, I could return, which ends the function, ends all of the loops, because once I find a duplicate, this is fulfilled. I don't need to keep looking. And then only return false down here if we get through everything. All right, let's see if I have any errors. So it's not popping up with any errors. Let me see now if it actually is working. So I need to change this up and call event has duplicates method and print the results. What do I need to pass has duplicates? Nothing. So there's no parameter. And the reason that is, is because in the constructor right here, we pass it all of the data. I guess I can format this back to how they had it, but this isn't necessary at all. Okay. And then I want to print the results. So I'll just do a, uh, you know, I'll do a variable. I could just print this directly, but results equals, and then I'll do a system.out.print. Are there any duplicates? I don't know. You can write whatever you want. Thought that made sense. Let me print my result. True, there are. And it looks like born this way is a duplicate. So is owed to color. So what if I do, I don't know, like an X here and an X here. Thunder is also a duplicate. Let me do an X where there are more. Let's see. Oh, there's still more. Wake me up as a dupe. Perfect. All right, let me undo all that. Oh, and we do that. Cool. Boom and boom. Lots of loopage, but it looks like, well, we got it. Oh, what a... We got it! Onward.